guys so i'm in the movie theater starting episode one of season one of game of thrones i'm in the movie theater it's awesome i had tried to start this um series a few years ago because my sister had gotten me these DVDs for like a birthday present and I had watched like three episodes and I just had stopped watching them now I'm trying to get back into it I'm late starting from the ground up season one episode one but I'm gonna get through it I'm gonna try to watch maybe an episode episode or two a day here at the theater. So I got my skinny pop popcorn and I'm chilling. Well, catch you later. Hi guys, so I'm going on my walk again today. I'm like 20 minutes earlier than usual. I usually go on my walk at 7 and it's 6.40ish. But I just wanted to say I'm grateful to be able to walk. Because it always makes me so much better during and after my walk. And it's easy to take that for granted. easy to just wallow and think about all the things that we don't have or we can't do but I have my legs I can walk and I'm healthy it's easy to think about how things aren't perfectly the way you want them how people aren't the way you want them. It's easy to just get swallowed up. I'm, I do that a lot. But I've been overcoming and winning against that lately. And walking has really been helping me to do that. So I'm just grateful to be able to do that. To be out here this evening it just exercise my legs. I'm not, I don't have any pain right now. And that is truly a blessing. From God. easy when you know you have so many negative well for me I just have one negative person around me it's easy to just get swallowed up in that and just drown in darkness A black hole. I just felt so terrible. One thing that helps me not only walking but just processing my thoughts through writing, writing how I feel, 
in that moment. I would encourage anybody who's struggling through any type of situation, emotional situation, to write about their feelings. Just, it doesn't matter what it looks like. I used to use pen and paper or pencil and paper, but now I just, I have a journal on my phone. I use a Google document and just stream of thought. However, whatever comes to mind, whatever you feel, it doesn't matter if it makes sense or not. I would encourage anybody to do that, to help you just work through your own inner thoughts and emotions so that way they don't consume you. Because it's so easy to get overwhelmed with a person, especially if you are living with very emotionally overwhelming person and who top it off happens to be negative it really does help to write so you can separate your thoughts and emotions from their thoughts and emotions and establish your own identity. I was going to go to the fountain, but I usually go to the fountain later on in the evening. And I just walk one time around um, like in the early evening. So yeah, emotions really like are nothing to play with. And I personally battle with that every every day. But when you get out here and walk or at least for me it just makes me feel like This is life. This is reality. Not all that other stuff that we may be feeling. Well, I'll talk to you guys later. Hey guys, I just wanted to come on here again and add on that I struggle mentally and emotionally. And I think it's important for people to be honest about themselves and I've been I write a lot about my struggles and how I handle them and how I overcome and just in general my thoughts at any given moment but I never verbalize it and voice it and that's part of my struggle is reclaiming my voice I 
and that's why I come on here and do these YouTube videos. It's for me. But I just think it's important to be honest. Because anybody looking at you, they may not know. But just in you saying what you're going through and being honest about it, it doesn't make you a loser. You know? To say you're struggling doesn't mean, oh, hi, I'm a loser, I'm weak. It makes you honest. Because everybody alive has a struggle everybody alive is struggling so a person who says I struggle mentally day to day with feeling tired feeling anxious feeling depressed, feeling overwhelmed. Feeling out of touch with reality. Everybody experiences that. And if somebody doesn't experience that, it just means that they're not yet as aware as you are. I'm not I'm not saying that in a condescending way like oh they're not aware it's just that I myself at one point was unaware. You know, throughout high school, I was largely unaware. And it, I just was thinking about that this morning. How my first time experiencing waking up with depression was my sophomore year. We were living in New Mexico at the time. And I woke up and I got ready for school and my mom was gonna take me to school. And I told her, I woke up depressed this morning. And I forgot what she said. But that's what I told her. And that's my first memory and experience with depression. And then we moved shortly thereafter to Alabama because she retired from the military in New Mexico. And then after she retired, she moved to Alabama. We moved to Alabama because that's where one of her sisters lived. And honestly, that helped me so much because it put me in an environment, in a school that... So the video cut off, but what I was saying was when we moved to Alabama, Montgomery, Alabama, I went to a school called LAMP. It's called Loveless Academic Magnet Program High School. And that school is highly ranked. It's like, when I graduated, it was like number 25, I think, in the nation's top high schools, the nation. And so even though it was rigorous, I loved it. and. I'm okay. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't love it, 
but I just did well there. Like, sure, it was hard. Sure, it was the grind. Wake up every morning, 6 a.m., go to bed, midnight. No room for social, and that was okay with me because I was not really a hangout type of person any anyways. But it was school, sports, school and sports. And it was structured and I had a feeling that I was going somewhere and I knew where I was going. And that was to college. And Loveless took me there. And Loveless got me a full scholarship to Scripps College. The beautiful paradise that enriched my life so much. It's like I came out there. I just love Scripps so much. But yeah, back to mental illness and my first experience with depression is I experienced depression for the first time sophomore year of high school. And like I said, it went away a little bit for a little while after we left New Mexico and moved to Alabama, but it resurfaced in college. So it's it's a struggle that I have dealt with and that I still deal with. And like I'm I said, it's not to downgrade anybody who doesn't experience it. But for me, the reason why I never experienced it was just because why I never experienced it before sophomore year of high school was because I just was very insulated and sheltered. I don't know. It's a very interesting topic of Who comes down with, I hate the term mental illness. I really do hate that term because it no longer means what it, it says. It just is like a catch-all term for people who aren't coping well with life. And I just like the mentally ill. And really, I don't feel like it should be termed mental illness or mentally ill. It should be called people experiencing life and people dealing with life. Not to say other people aren't dealing with life, that aren't experiencing the pain, experiencing mental pain on a day-to-day -day basis. No, I feel like we're all to a certain degree mentally ill and or a better term mentally struggling mentally battling mentally overcoming
That's what life is. It's a series of overcomings. And it's not until you get tired of struggling and tired of overcoming that you are ill, that you fail. In fact, the more you have to over overcome day to day, the more of a winner you are. Because that's like six times of winning that day or 10 or 20 times of overcoming and winning when you felt down. You know, that's 20 times of winning versus somebody who doesn't experience a struggle and you know they wake up that one time and they may not even feel a struggle or whatever so they didn't even win one time the more struggles you have the more you feel ill or sick or anything like that and the more you press through it and overcome the more you're a winner. And that's what needs to change in our views of struggle and mental illness and and perseverance. What makes a winner is not necessarily getting through life with as little hiccups as possible with as little struggles as possible as cleanly as possible nope that's not what makes a winner what makes a winner is some is going through life experiencing many struggles and overcoming and pressing through. So just remember whenever you feel down or you feel like you can't do something or you feel less than or you feel like your life isn't going anywhere or not going where you want it to go. or you're having any negative type of feeling in general. Whenever that happens, and whenever, you know, don't think, okay, that's just confirmation that I'm flawed or defective. Don't use that as confirmation that you're defective. or ill. Know that your life does, is important and it has meaning and you are going somewhere. Even if it doesn't look like it at the moment. And each time you combat those negative feelings and emotions you're that much more a winner. You're stronger than somebody who doesn't experience pain on a deep, crippling, debilitating sometimes level. I think now's the time more than ever for people, I mean, I guess I'll just speak for myself. I feel the charge to open up about my experiences and to be honest. 
because A, now more than ever, I'm experiencing it more intensely than ever, the battles and struggles against the negative thoughts and untruths. And now more than ever, we're seeing it in the world today. People are being, are believing those things about themselves. And we can see that with just, I mean, I don't watch the news, so I don't really know it's all the bad things that are happening. But I do know that just from my day-to-day -day experiences, going to the stores, just being out in the world, that people are struggling. Like anytime somebody treats you poorly or is harsh or snappy at the register or when you're in a store or just you're not feeling the love, well, that's because that person themselves is not feeling the love and they're struggling and that it's just you're just in the way of their own of whatever they're going through you just happen to be there so that's why I say in the world it's evidence that people are struggling more I mean, I can't speak for people. I can only speak for myself. And that's why I make these, I wanna make these videos, is to speak for myself.